And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Jordan, and you are watching live here at Sellers of Sonoma in beautiful Railroad Square, Santa Rosa, California. I'm not surprised, not everything lasts. I've broken my heart so many times I stopped keeping track. Talk myself in, I talk myself out. I get all worked up, then I let myself down. I tried so very hard not to lose it. I came up with a million excuses. I thought I thought of every possibility. So much more than I get I just haven't met you yet And good evening everybody and welcome to TV Tuesday Live. We are here in beautiful Santa Rosa, California where I'm getting paid back today for all the, uh, for the probably the last month I have been making fun of those of you in the uh, colder regions of uh, the country. We've been living with this beautiful 75, 80 degree weather. I mean, it just couldn't get any better than that. And now we're really getting paid back hard because it's raining and it's cold and it's wet and it's just awful. And uh, I'm sure you probably have worse weather, but boy, here we, we sure don't like this. But uh, welcome. And, and tonight, uh, we're, we're really in for a treat tonight. Uh, we're really going to unveil a couple of things tonight. My guest tonight is someone that um, if you're in, into social media or are trying to be part of social media or maybe you play around a little bit with Facebook or Twitter, um, Shell Israel's my, my, my guest, but I want to give you a little background on this guy. Um, you know, if we talked about social media five or six years ago, most people wouldn't even know what the heck you're talking about. But he was involved in in this, you know, this change in our in our world today. In fact, we'll talk about how it actually did affect uh, other parts of the world. Um, let me give you a little background. Uh, he's a marketing and communications consultant since 1979, and he's worked with hundreds of companies, mostly in the tech sector. Uh, since 2005, his consulting advising focus has remained exclusively on the issues of social media. Uh, and business strategies. Um, he's also an accomplished keynote speaker, and uh, he's appeared in more than 100 times uh, in, since 2006. He's spoken in nine countries, um, always on subjects related to social media. His blog, Global Neighborhoods, is often listed among the world's top business blogs. Um, so in, in the social media world, well, if you were involved in it in 2005, you were one of the one of the few. But uh, this guy's got a heck of a resume. So again, I want to uh, reintroduce Shell Israel. He was here with us in December. Shell, welcome, and uh, we're we're glad to to have you. you know, I, um, I mentioned a little bit how how this really changes in the world, and you know, I think for the very first time, firsthand, we really saw this in is in in Egypt, where the social media, Twitter, Facebook. Um, if they were able to communicate, boy, that really made a huge difference. I mean, that had a big impact. I mean, it, we haven't measured it yet, but I got to believe it, it, it had a huge impact. Well, it, in my last book, I wrote a line that says, tyranny doesn't do well with the sunlight. And I think that's what happened in Egypt. Uh, we have a long history in the world of people wanting to be free and making noise on streets and being quelled and the outside world just goes on having their bacon and eggs for breakfast and going to work. Mm -hmm. But now, no matter how hard governments may try, uh, there are too many voices and too few ears. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in Egypt. Yeah. Um, I only wish it had happened in June of 2009 in Iran, which yeah, I, right. I don't know if you've heard, but there's been killing in the streets by the government. Yeah, there too. yeah, and and unfortunately, you know, they got a little tougher uh, go there. But boy, I tell you what, th that really was a, a way for them to communicate with the rest of the world and to gather the thoughts of many and and bring them there to to you know do what they've done and 
they got a long way to go, but boy, that 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 was pretty powerful. And, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you you tell tell the folks here when you really got involved in social media because you know for for us as a business, um, you know we've been involved in it since we opened. You know we'll be open next month, uh, two years, but. Um, you know, we're kind of new to the game, really. I mean, you have a lot more experience. The whole world is new to the game. You talk about my experience as if it were a thousand years ago, but it's only five and a half years. That's amazing. Um, and in that time, social media is being used. The numbers that are cited are ridiculous in a lot of ways. Facebook is not just users, it's users and businesses. Mm -hmm. But a very large percentage of the adult world in countries where there are electricity are now using social media. Uh, the wine industry may be behind where I was, but I was mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, and this all happened when there were a whole lot of laid-off software developers. Mm -hmm. Whenever you lay off a lot of smart software developers, you're going to have something new happen. Sure. And that's what happened here. And this hit there like a rock in the middle of an ocean. That's been spreading out and out and out. Sure. And that, now the wine industry is aware that that's where their customers are spending time. Yeah. And they need to go join the conversations that are being held anyway. There. Yeah. And I noticed that that a lot of wineries Thank you. have created these positions now where it's really a full time job. I mean, um, and that was unheard of even you know three or four years ago. It was I think it'll a, be unheard of three or four years from now too. <laughs> Um, I think social media is a tool that most people will use as they do business, mm -hmm. just like they use computers and telephones. Right. And right now, you have businesses with these processes going on, mm -hmm. and there's something new that's disrupted the process. It's called social media. And now there are these individuals who are there to do social media. Um, I imagine at one time there was somebody who ran the telephones. Yeah, you know, I, sure. I remember working for the number one high-tech uh, PR firm at the time. It was called Regis McKenna, Inc. Okay. And we had a woman named Olive, and she sat at a Diablo um, computer in an isolated room, and she typed the press releases. And here we were. We were announcing Apple and Televideo and Sun Microsystems, and that's what the state was and how... Mm -hmm. How that was just a minute ago for some of us, but yeah, you right. know, the whole world has changed. And it's really moving so quickly now. I mean, this this, this information is just screaming. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little technical on the on the uh, questions that I'm gonna ask y'all today about about Twitter and some of the things that you see, and and it really um, to kind of put it into focus. But we're gonna get into that in a, in a minute, and I, I'm gonna get just. It, it won't be technical to you, but it will be technical to myself and I, many. I, I have are... geeks in the audience. And <laughs> okay. I may need them. So, all right. Okay. Um, also, tonight we're going <clears> to <throat> unveil um, a new tasting here in the tasting room. Uh, as you guys know, on Friday we had the uh, uh, Winemaker Gala event. I had all nine vintners here. We had a fantastic time. The uh, uh, We tasted... Oh, up, upward close to 50 wines, and uh, uh, we had all of our winemakers signing bottles and, and, and telling their stories. But we realized that there's a lot of wines that we don't pour here in the tasting room because of their price point. So I created a reserve tasting of four magnificent wines that we normally do not open. We're going to unveil them tonight, so you're going to get a little treat while we learn about social media. We're going to taste some very cool wines. We're going to taste the La Serena uh, Barrett Vineyard. That's from her private vineyard over in Calistoga, uh, Syrah. Then we're going to taste the Epos, which is a, um, a Meritage Bordeaux blend uh, wine from Napa Stagecoach Vineyard. And then we're going to taste the Pirate, which is also a La Serena wine. And uh, that is a Bordeaux blend with a little Mavedra and some Syrah and Petit Verdot. So it's got some oddballs in there. But it's a magnificent bottle of wine. And again, we never pour it here. So a lot of people are going to love this. If you live in the area, you're going to absolutely love this. And then Kruitz's 2007 cab that just got 95 points. Um, so that tasting in the tasting room will be $30. Uh, 
you can uh, apply that toward the purchase of any of the four wines or just uh, enjoy that wonderful tasting. So we're going to unveil that tonight. Also, we're going to do uh, another segment that we did last week and we did the week before. And uh, I'm going to ask some questions and uh, then we're going to take really a break, not from the live feed. Live, you'll actually be watching, but we're going to stop the recording side of it. We want to get these segments down to about 10 minutes each, but it'll give you a chance, those of you that are watching that, that have, may have the answer to the question, uh, you can type that in to the dialog box to the right, and uh, uh, Kevin here, my son Kevin, will be uh, uh, answering or, or talking with you, and we'll get those questions answered, or you can, a ask, you can answer the questions on the uh, card. Um, so I've got two right away. The very first one is, many wine experts suggest pairing which of these wines with a spicy Chinese or a Thai dinner? Would you pair it up with Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Gewürztraminer, or Gamay? So the choices are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Gewürztraminer, or Gamay. That's question number one. So spicy foods, what would pair up best? And then question number two, which champagne is most likely the driest? And this is one you'll probably get wrong. Um, I, I got it wrong before. Brut, cuvee, extra dry, or semi, uh, demi-sec. So which is most likely the driest? We're going to take uh, a break. We'll come back. We are still live, so I'm going to grab some wine and start pouring, and then we'll do the recording side of this. So. <laughs> 